If WWE wants somebody like me to enjoy SmackDown, there are a couple of things that I suggest that they do. Number one, actually have Roman Reigns on the damn show! We can't acknowledge him if he's not there! Who's right in this crap? Well, we know who. But no Roman Reigns equals no fun for me or anybody else! Seemed to be the general theme and reaction last night during the show, that is for sure. Number two, don't burn over a half hour of screen time on Charlotte fucking Flair! Who the fuck does that? Number three, say numbers one and two! It's almost like you could tell the show was on FS1 this week. Because it really seemed like they didn't care very much. Am I wrong here? That's what it felt like. They really didn't care that much. Like they, they gave a live mic to Charlotte Flair and expected that to go well. And of course, people are going to talk about that she did well, and she totally didn't. She had multiple times where you could tell she lost her train of thought, couldn't remember what to say. But this is your fucking best of the women. Give me a damn break. She's the face that runs the place? Well, what face? On what day? And if you're saying, well, that's insensitive to shit talk or plastic surgery, no, it's not. She's phony as shit. And we should not be propping people like that up in our society saying, hey, the only way you're going to get respected or admired is you have to get a bunch of phony ass work so that way you can look differently from what you actually are. That's stupid. We really burned 30 minutes of bullshit involving Charlotte Flair. And this is, to me, a perfect example of talking about the Vince McMahon of old versus what you've got now, which is the Al Davis-like old man Vince McMahon. All the crap that came out about Charlotte last week. To those that are going to say, well, it just means it wasn't true, blah, blah, blah. No, it's fucking true. You know it was. Stop it. But what happened is instead of humbling and embarrassing Charlotte, the Vince McMahon of old would have had her go out there, do something stupid, probably drop the strap right there to shit seat. Honestly. And he would have done it in the most degrading, embarrassing way possible for Charlotte. The Vince McMahon of old would have certainly done that. Instead, all of that shit, he just lets her win clean. Because old Vince McMahon apparently doesn't fucking care. What other examples do you need of this? The fans like Sasha Banks. She didn't really get her title shot at SummerSlam because of whatever reasons. So, of course, in putting her, instead of putting her in a good spot where you make her look good, where the fans want to get behind her, you make her look like shit. And then, of course, you get the shit seat. She's clearly liked by the fans. There was certainly an audible buzz energy when she came out. I think the gimmick is stupid. I don't think she's that good of a talent, but I'm not dumb enough to say that it doesn't exist. I, there's something clearly there. So as a good business person, you would think, you would think you would want to maximize upon that, capitalize upon that. Use this as an opportunity to feature somebody more prominently that will feel fresh and feel new. And she will do all of those things. So, of course, you randomly have her turn heel and attack Sasha fucking Banks, which made no logical sense, really, if you think about it. Because what the hell is Sasha to blame for? So you got a fucking Charlotte promo, uh, a Charlotte match, uh, and then a dumb dick-ass heel turn by Shitsy Blackheart, where she squashes and bashes the hell out of Sasha Banks. Who wrote this crap? Again, we know who it is. Another example of asking who writes this crap. Why are you going to have Jeff Hardy if you're just going to use him like this? Which means you're just wasting him. If you're going to have him, use him. Just having him randomly appear to do an interview and then you never really get through the interview is just fucking dumb. How, how do you have these people that you've actually invested a lot into over the years that actually became stars to varying levels and then you don't know how the hell to use them anymore? It's ridiculous. The whole thing about Brock Lesnar being fined a million dollars. The best thing about this is the back and forth between Kayla Braxton and Paul Heyman. It's one of those things I actually really, really look forward to. Because I like the fact that there's actually back and forth banter. It's not where we had gotten to the point where interview asks a question and then the interviewee buries the interviewer and then just talks or does whatever the fuck. 
Here there's actual like back and forth banter. They play off of each other. It works really well. Would like to see that happen more in interviews and more in wrestling in general. Drew McIntyre's got a challenge. Says I want to come out here and kick ass. And here comes Mustafa Ali. And this is the best we've got for both of them, huh? Drew beats him. Of course he does. He should have. But then Mustafa Ali. We're going the Muhammad Hassan 2.0 angle. Really? And this is really the best you've got for him? You really want to go down the kind of like race, religion, ethnic tripe? And the fans, it seems like, generally want to like him? This is really stupid. Really stupid, very lazy, and should not be commended in any way, shape, or form. Just like the whole happy Corbin shit should not be praised in any way, shape, or form. This trick or street fight. Fuck this shit. It was long. It had the stupid Halloween gimmicks. And if they were done better, maybe it would be cool, but eh. Oh, here's a pumpkin. Here's a pumpkin. Fuck out of here. <laughs> And it's a match involving Shinsuke and Baron Corbin. And that's what we want to fucking see. And of course the WWE with their dumb asses. Because I'm always going to bring this up because it's so appropriate. They had a chance to really get something with Baron Corbin. The broke, bum-ass Baron Corbin shtick was working. It was getting over. It was the first time in his career that you really saw Baron Corbin doing something in a way that could emotionally connect with the audience. Fans were digging that shit. So of course they instantly killed it. Because they were probably using it as a way to troll Baron Corbin instead of actually trying to rebuild Baron Corbin into something bigger and better. And that's what you get. Just like you look at this whole thing involving Naomi and Sonya Deville. Like, what is the punchline here? What's the payoff? What's the fucking point? And it dawned on me just like how long Naomi's been with this company. Like, if you're going to do this shit, then just hurry up and have her join your husband and the bloodline. I want to see Naomi get beat by Shayna Baszler again. Fuck that shit. I really don't want to see Naomi and Sonya Deville. Fuck that shit too. Like the whole premise of this is dumb. Naomi deserves better. Yes. There are just better ways to utilize your talent than what the fuck they're doing right now. And you see that throughout the show. Fans like Sasha Banks. So let's make her look stupid. There are infinite number of reasons... That Charlotte Flair is hated and should be hated, but you kind of try to toe the line with her and push her and still, even when she's acting like a petulant, pratty, political bitch, you're still making sure that she goes over clean, one, two, three, because of course you fucking do. This tired ass shit with Mustafa Ali, or Mustafa Ali, excuse me, it's important to get the name right, I understand. So many things you could do and that's what you got to come up with. Like that, that's going for the obviously lazy thing. The lowest common denominator is what I call that. Having Naomi struggle to get a spot or get any type of traction and respect, like, it would make sense. You know who this would really make sense with? An Italia. It works better with Natalia. It makes more sense with Natalia. It doesn't with Naomi. Naomi can organically and has organically gotten over on her own. She actually has gimmick. She actually has personality that the fans have connected to. You don't need to do this type of dumb shit. You can get away with this dumb shit when you do it with Natalia because it makes more sense when you do. So, of course, they went with Naomi instead. Yes, it's nice to see Naomi on TV every week. It's always nice to see Naomi. But so many things wrong with this week's show. A quarter of your television time featured Charlotte Flair. Fuck that shit. None of that time featured Roman Reigns live and in person. Absolutely fuck that shit. And even when you get to the whole thing with, you know, Xavier Woods, King Xavier and Kofi, and then bumping into Top, top Dollar and the Hit Row crew backstage, like, okay, you're teasing something there at some point, cool. But in the moment, you're having to have the culture win. All here for it. But then they're getting confronted by the Usos, and let's party like it's 2018. I thought somebody was going to throw out the bar, talking about how they want to get X-rated like Xavier Woods again. I mean, you might as well, if you're going to rehash it, you might as well rehash it all the way, right? But the main event tag match was good. 
You know, it would be the quality of main event TV tag match you'd expect from New Day and Usos. Like, it could be very good stuff. It's just felt like a very phoned-in episode of SmackDown. Am I wrong here? You could tell, first of all, that this was on FS1 because the buzz around this show was significantly less. The interactions that I was having on Twitter were far lower than usual. Overall, just the buzz and tweets and so forth that I saw about SmackDown this week were much lesser than they typically would be. So you could tell. But you could also tell in terms of the effort level. It's almost like they knew, hey, you know, no matter what we really do, we're going to get somewhere between probably 900,000 to a million viewers in the so-so performance in the 18-49 to 49 demo. So no reason to go breaking our backs and killing ourselves here. Let's just get by and get through this week. That's what this show felt like. And this has nothing to do with me with anything that another company like an AEW does or anything like that. I look solely at it from a WWE standpoint here for a WWE show and say, I don't give a damn if you're on FS1 or Fox. It doesn't matter. I don't give a crap if you feel like your number is going to be crap anyways because you're going up against the World Series and other things and NBA basketball. Like You have a responsibility to your fan base, to your audience, to your paying customers to give them the best possible product you can on a week-in, week-out basis. Fuck all the other factors, fuck anything else. And instead, this was the abortion of a show that you ran out there this week, and you should be damned ashamed of yourselves.